How does your integrity as a man, how does that bless your kids, your grandkids? This podcast is brought to you by Blackbee Ministries International. To find out more, visit blackbee.org. Well, welcome to the Richard Blackaby Leadership Podcast. My name is Sam, and I'm your host. And joining me on the special Father's Day edition is one great father himself, <laughs> Dr. Richard Blackaby. <laughs> one great and, father to another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And grandfather. So, so Father's Day twice. just passed uh, just a, a two days ago. Uh, but uh, I think, Sam, we were thinking uh, that it wouldn't hurt just to have some kind of reflections here uh, as yeah. it's now in our rearview mirror. but. Uh, you know, I think uh, I'm, I'm one that ge- generally feels like it's fine to have some special days like Mother's Day, Father's Day, and that kind of thing, uh, co- or like Thanksgiving, certain days in the year that just uh, cause us to reflect a little bit more in a focused way about certain things. And uh, I think uh, I know some pastors that actually struggle a bit with Father's Day, Mother's Day, because year after year they're preaching a all-encompassing message on what it means to be a godly father or a godly mother and uh, and a- after a couple of years of that they're kind of running low on on <laughs> sermonic material i'll refer you to what i said last year yeah just ditto <laughs> uh, uh and i've actually had a number of times where i've been asked to fill in for pastors to preach on Father's Day. And it's not that I'm necessarily an expert on it, but they just want some outsider to somebody else to, come in to with to a take fresh that word. And, yeah. uh, but, uh, but I do think it, 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 it's, it, it's, and I know some pastors that will barely give a nod to something like Father's Day and then just carry on with their sermon series on Habakkuk or something. And, uh, I, and I, I think that it's, it, I think it is important for the church, uh, to, to lean in a little bit, especially in, in these days, to say, well, but what does it mean to be a godly man or godly father? Because uh, you're certainly not, certainly not going to hear that in the world anywhere. And so um, surely at the church, we can take a little bit of time out of 52 uh, Sundays to perhaps talk a little bit about that. And so I thought just maybe today, we'd just uh, just reflect a little bit more. Before we just race on from Father's Day on to July Fourth or whatever else it is we're acknowledging next, um, and there's a there's an interesting verse in Proverbs twenty verse seven. It says, "A righteous person acts with integrity; his children who come after him will be happy." And I like that idea of a righteous or a godly person is someone who acts with integrity. And and if you do live your life with integrity, then your kids, your grandkids are going to be happy or they're going to they're going to feel the positive results of that. Hmm. Uh, and so of course the word integrity, even unbelievers, atheists believe integrity is important and and I, I think integrity is basically saying you're the real deal, that uh, what you see is what you get, what you say is what you do, uh, that you, you follow certain standards uh, and, and, and I can measure you or you, someone can measure you and, um, and you, you, you meet the standard. You don't fall short. You don't advertise to be one kind of person and then end up being another Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, Sam, just even this past week, um, another very prominent religious leader, it came out that uh, uh, he had had a moral failure and now he's having to step down as uh, a minister and mm. um, and someone that was highly respected, uh, very prominent, had done lots and lots of great things. But, um, you know, you're always just disappointed once again when you... When someone who's done a lot of teaching, written a lot of books, uh, has had a, been on a lot of platforms, but then you find out, well, they too have have not practiced always what they preached, and they've fallen as well. And and so you know, we're just reminded over and over again of how important it is to have integrity, uh, to to be the same person in private that you are in public, and. Um, and you, you can't really emphasize it enough because even prominent, uh, popular Christian authors and speakers are regularly falling. Uh, and so, so I just I thought we'd just kind of look just for a moment at what that looks like. So, in terms of a father, uh, happy, I could say, uh, you know, the the a, a godly man, uh, a godly father is 
uh, someone that practices integrity. And when they do, their their children are blessed. Uh, and so, what does that look like? To how does your integrity as a man? Uh, how does that bless your kids, your grandkids? And and so a couple of things that that means, the uh, first one I would just say is um, just live consistently with what you believe. If, if you tell your kids that God is all powerful, then don't let your kids see you worrying all the time and wringing your hands. Uh, if he is as powerful as you say he is, or if you say that he's a loving God, that God is perfect love, then don't go around being worried and anxious all the time as if God's going to somehow let you down, that God's going to just be distracted and not come through for you when you need him. Uh, If he loves you as much as you say he does, then you don't need to worry. Uh, An all-powerful God who loves you, you ought to be the most non-anxious person around, but oftentimes that's not the case. Um, and again, if you, if you believe God is holy, then that's going to affect how you live. you you, can't live an unholy life if you f- believe that you're going to give an account to a holy God. And so the problem sometimes is that we say we believe one thing about God, but then we live another way. And, and that, that lacks integrity. Uh, integrity means that you're consistent. And so if you claim God's all powerful, then you don't worry and fret as if, God isn't going to be able to help you with the, the kind of problem that you have. Uh, integrity says, no, I, I claim God is loving, and then I act like God's loving. I, I claim he's holy, and then I relate to him like he's holy. And mm-hmm. so uh, integrity is, is consistency. And, and the reason that that's particularly important for our kids is because our kids are trying to figure out what God is like. And so if you say he's loving, but then you act as if he's not loving— what are your kids more than likely going to assume? They're going to probably go with what you do, not what yeah. you say. And so they're not, they're going to question whether God loves them. If you say he's holy, but then you watch all kinds of unholy things on TV and joke about all kinds of unholy things around the table, uh, you make all kinds of unholy compromises uh, with your own personal conduct, uh, then you can say he's holy all you want, but they're, they're, they're going to watch what you do and, and they're going to be led astray from what God is really like. And so, uh, and so I think it's if you want to bless your kids, then don't just say what God is like. Live like, like God is that kind of person. Uh, and secondly, having integrity also means that you, you, uh, you do what you say you're going to do. Uh, and so your, your deeds match your words all the time. So... A couple of things, particularly with kids, is uh, don't make empty promises. Yeah, and like I, I think we've touched on this uh, before, but uh, I used to, I would kind of be bad at this sometimes. Lisa would get after me because, you know, I didn't want to necessarily. You know, kids are always like, "Well, when are we going to do that? Or when can we do that?" Like, well, we we will. You know, we and I and I fully intended that we would do it at some point, but I just didn't want to get nailed down to yeah, <laughs> next Tuesday. Sort you know. of an infinite time horizon on some of those yeah, uh, and, uh, comments. Yeah. And it's like, well, kids can't think. Like for me, I'm thinking, well, two years from now, we'll be, I've got to be in California anyway. Maybe then we'll go to a, you know, Universal Studios when we're there. But but for a, a small child, two years down the road is way too, too long. Yeah. It's... Uh, and so uh, there are times where you, you, I think, especially as dads, sometimes we just want to get the kids off our back. So well, we will do that. Yeah. Uh, and and maybe sometimes you don't necessarily really, you just hope they'll forget. And uh, But I think with our kids, we need to be very careful. They need to know that if you promise something, then it's it's going to, you're going to do it. You're, yeah. you're serious about it. You don't, you're, you don't ever have empty words. And 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 sometimes what happens is we say something and then we just forget. And again, I mean, we we can all forget, but if you've made a promise to your kids, uh, you better find a way to not forget. Uh, you better write it down. You better put it somewhere in yeah. a note, your notes, where you can review it and realize, oh, I told my son that I was going to do this for him. Uh, I almost forgot. I'm glad I put that reminder in there. Uh, don't. Uh, integrity to your kids says, yeah, when dad says something, he always does it. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll tell you, as you get older, I used to have a, a better memory for things. I I might be just driving the kids uh, to school in the car, and I something would come up, and I would say, "Okay, I'll you know, I'll okay, I'll take care of that." And typically, I I, I would take care of it because I'd remember it. <laughs> now it's getting a little harder. So, uh, but that doesn't let me off the hook. That means I've got to have a better system to to remember what it is I promised. Uh, yeah. And and then just one final thing on that one is um, if you do say something. Uh, if you do make some kind of promise, uh, then be prepared to go to great lengths uh, to to make it so. I, you know, your your wife, my my only daughter, years ago, she got into this thing where she wanted me to make her a cake for her birthday every year, and there were several years where I was actually coming home from a business trip on her birthday, and so, uh, but she really wanted me to make this certain kind of chocolate cake for her on her birthday, and so. Uh, there were times where boy, by the time I got home, it, I was going to be hard pressed to get this cake whipped up and baked and iced and everything else. And so, uh, but I would work it out with my wife and there were times where Lisa would, I'd wa- literally walk into the kitchen and, uh, all the ingredients had been pulled out by Lisa. I'd made sure all the ingredients were in the cupboard before I left. Yeah. Uh, and she pulled everything out. The bowls were out, the, the measuring spoons were out and, um, and you know, sure enough, but, but by the time it was ready for her, her birthday cake that evening, uh, it was pretty fresh. It was just right out of the <laughs> Still oven. Still warm. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, but you know what that says to your kids as well. It's when when you uh, if you're just too if you're just very easily deterred. You know, yeah, I said that, but then hey, I got a call or I wasn't feeling well or whatever. Uh, then I think a lot of times that tells your kids, well, dad makes promises, but boy, it doesn't take that much for him to justify not following through. Well, and I think it show like, it, I think it communicates to them that, um, they're less valuable, yeah. you know, cause if you don't do everything you can to follow through with what you told them, then that sends a signal that like, okay, well, you know, I, I'm just sort of one of a list of things that the dad has to handle. Yeah. And I'm not the most important. Yeah. And maybe if he had made that same promise to some a business uh, associate or something, then he would have taken that much more seriously. But for me, if there's any in, inconvenience that comes along, then he can just blow that off and excuse not. And, and, you know, there are people like that. It just doesn't take hardly anything for them to just say, well, this came up, so I couldn't do what I promised you. Uh, and yeah. to them, it's almost like any excuse will do. And that that's so demeaning uh, if if that's you. And they're saying any well, excuse it's at all. In, yeah, it's to, insulting to, to those who you're making the excuse to. And I think kids especially can feel that. Like, yeah. I think that they're not, you know, I think we can sometimes write off kids. Like, oh, well, they'll, you know, whatever. They'll get over it. They'll get over it. Or, you know, they, whatever, they don't get it or these sort of things. But I think they feel that much more than than I think we realize. And so they like, they'll say, okay, this, I'm not significant enough to, to overcome whatever it is you've got to do to, to, uh, to do the thing that you agreed to do. And then the flip side is, you know, when kids, there's a tremendous security that comes to a child when they know that, that if dad says something, it's going to happen. Yeah. uh, That he'll, he'll, move heaven or earth, earth if he has to, but that's going to, that's going to take place. And, uh, and so I, what, what a blessing to, to have uh, a dad like that. And, and that, I think that's integrity. It's saying I gave my word. So, um, so I'm going to have to do that. And, and, you know, sometimes even something as simple as telling your son, yeah, you know what, when you come home from school today, I'm going to take you for a hamburger. We're going to have a little father son time. And then, but then all of a sudden there's a crisis at work and, uh, they, a calls coming in or can you come by the office and you you you've got to decide okay well i i made that promise but um but now there's a issue at work i've got to go deal with uh and sometimes i think we're just far too quick to just assume well i mean i I have to break my promise because there's a problem at work and it's like well but i do you have to do that? Do you, do you, can you still work something out? I mean, you may have, you, certainly you may have to deal with what's going on at work, but can you wait till after you've had your hamburger with your son or can you do something differently to get it done? And so that, that's integrity. Uh, 
and and a third thing I would just say is, hold uh, integrity also means that you hold yourself to the same standard that you hold others to, and it, that's always interesting to me. Well, I kind of saw a little bit of this a couple of days ago, uh, where someone uh, was in a, having kind of a a bit of a debate, a back and forth with someone, and. Uh, and and someone had made a statement, and and, and so uh, the the opposing person had kind of pushed back, and then the the person who spoke first got up and got got really ugly and basically said, um, "I don't like the, the the way they spoke to me, and uh, I think that was rude and uncalled for." And then they were ten times as rude <laughs> as the person they were complaining about. And it's like, hey, if you're going to say something that annoys me, then I can. I can use the nuclear option on you and uh, and just be incredibly uh, uh, ugly toward you. And and again, the in- integrity is, well, listen, if you don't want that person, you don't think it's right for them to talk to you that way, then you've got no excuse, uh, no business talking the same way. But, uh, but, but I've just seen that often uh, where uh, a person will be indignant about what someone else is doing, and then, but their own behavior completely disqualifies them uh, and maybe a lot of times that happens with anger we, we we get upset with someone else and because now we're angry we feel like it justifies any kind of ugly behavior that we do or I think that person's a heretic so they're, they're, they're not being true to the Bible so I'm going to just completely forsake all Christian principles here in my own ugliness and anger and I'm going to troll them and and be awful toward them and and lie about them and discredit and and uh, misrepresent them so that everybody hates them and to say well wait a minute you're you would be horribly offended if they did that to you but but you feel fine about doing it to them and so integrity says uh, whatever I would expect of someone else I'm going to hold myself to the same standard I'm going to I'm going to live the same way I want others to live toward me. And uh, and that that is just interesting. We you know we often want people to uh, forgive us, and yet when it comes to us forgiving them, it's a it's a whole different story. Uh, and so integrity says, yeah, if I'm going to have high standards for others, then I've got to certainly have that same high standard for myself. Yeah. Um, and so uh, of course a, a fourth one is just uh, be the same person at home that you are at work or at your church, if you're a pastor. Uh, and of course, that's just one of the reasons I've often said, uh, as someone who was a pastor's kid growing up, that I rarely ever saw a lukewarm sitting on the fence pastor's kid. They either were supportive, they embraced what their parents did in ministry, or they rejected it and walked away from it. But rare, rarely did they just remain indifferent to it. Uh, and oftentimes that was a result of what they saw at home because they all saw their their dad perhaps preaching uh, or leading in a, in a church uh, and their their parents maybe putting on the best their best face uh, when they were in the church building or on the platform but then when they saw that same parent come home all of a sudden they, they weren't smiling anymore they weren't gracious they weren't kind they weren't polite and these kids, they, they just, day after day, they saw a transformation. Uh, one person on stage in the public and a, another person at home. And that just convinced a lot of kids over the years that it wasn't real, that it was a show, uh, that it was just put on. Uh, and so uh, I've just found that uh, integrity means in your home that whether your kids go with you to work, whether they see you on stage somewhere, uh, or whether they see you in the living room, they around the, the dinner table, they just know their dad because he's always the same. Uh, he treats everybody the same, uh, and uh, he doesn't suddenly light up and become a nice person when he's in public, but he's just as nice, just as thoughtful around the dinner table with his own family. Uh, and, of course, that's, that's really the ultimate uh, integrity when your kids... Yeah. They, they 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 never they always see the same version of you. Uh, yeah. They, they, they don't. There's not different versions. There's of not dad. church dad and home yeah. dad and work it, dad. It, it's always the same dad. Uh, yeah. And kind of along with that is also just be the same when you're under pressure. And again, there's a lot of pressure on men today. Um, 
financial pressure, work pressures, all kinds of different pressures. Um, and sometimes we use that as an excuse. Uh, mm. It's, uh, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm normally not this irritable, but I'm under a lot of pressure right now. I'm, I'm, I usually don't snap at people like, uh, you know, I just did, but hey, I'm under a lot of pressure right now. Uh, I, you know, and, and I, I get it. I've been under lots of pressure and I, I'll be very focused in, at times and trying to deal with whatever it is that's putting the pressure on me. Um, but you, but in, in one sense, pressure is, is basically when you get squeezed and whatever comes out when you're squeezed is yeah. the real you. Um, and, and so squeezing sometimes is just a test. Um, uh, and, and that just says huge, uh, uh, things when your kids see their dad under pressure and he's still gracious, he's still thoughtful. He still stops to listen to his kids, even though he's clearly dealing with some really huge issues at work or, or, or life at the, at that time. Uh, and so that's also an opportunity when you're under a lot of pressure. Uh, maybe you're facing some deadlines, maybe you're being, uh, some real stresses right now that are going on at work. Um, but your son or your daughter asks you a question or they need something from you and you're still kind, you're still thoughtful. You still take time to listen. That that's going to say wonders to them. And when your kids are younger, they may not even understand, uh, necessarily what they, they can't comprehend necessarily all the pressure you're under at work, but, but they certainly do understand if you snap at them, uh, yeah, and you are rude to them or impatient with them, they do get that. Uh, yeah, they, whatever whatever pressure you're under, um, you know, they're certainly not the cause of, nor do they understand, nor do they really care, in, yeah. a, in a sense, when they're younger, at least. That, yeah. You know, like, you know, if, da- if dad's got a lot going on outside the home, that, that has no bearing on, on their lives, and all they see is the, the man in front of them. Yeah. And so, you know, just... Don't don't take it out on them. Right. And there are times when like I would be really dealing with some hard things at work and <clears throat> maybe I was having to confront some staff, or maybe even fire some staff and uh, uh, or just dealing with some real financial crises or different things. And uh, and and I, I would bring that work home with me. And and at times uh, Lisa would just have to say, Richard, like you just need to leave that at the door. Like the, you're at home now. And yeah. that, that, that stress is not a home stress. That's a work stress. And you, you're going to have to just, and that's, that's not always easy to do uh, when you're carrying that load, you're the leader, uh, but your kids, they, they deserve to have you fully present with them. And, and there are times where it just doesn't do you any good to just sit there and wallow in the stress at home. Like, yeah. you're not, it's not going to solve the problem. Right. It's not going to make it better the next day because you worried all night at home about it. Yeah. There's times where maybe the best thing you can do is put it out of your mind for a while and just play with your kids and, uh, and just enjoy dinner with your family and uh, kind of take a break from all that. And by tomorrow morning, you'll be ready to go after it again. But uh, but, but that stress that comes on you, are you the same person in stress or out of stress? And, and then a, a, a related one, a sixth one, is just, are you the same person when you experience success or when you experience failure? Uh, maybe you tried something and it didn't work. Uh, maybe you just lost your job. Uh, maybe you, you got passed over for that promotion that you thought you were going to get. Uh, can you come home and still be loving and thoughtful and fun around your kids or uh do you, do you let all the wind come out of your sails and and likewise sometimes maybe you've had a success and and so you uh, you just really want to bask in the glory of your success and maybe life's a lot about you at that time and but you know i've i've found sometimes maybe i've had some successes uh uh, maybe I've been speaking somewhere and it went just really well and, and people love what I did and I got lots of accolades, but, but then you, you walk home and quite frankly, your kids, the, they, they could care less about yeah. what happened. They don't, they don't understand it. They, they, they don't get it. All they know is they've been waiting for dad to get home to play Legos with them. Uh, and, but now I feel like I just somehow deserve more because I've just had a huge coup at work and, uh, it looks like it's going to be a big promotion and 
I just want to focus on that and about me and my achievement. And there are times where I think wh whether you failed or whether you succeeded, uh, when you walk in the door, uh, you've just got to be dad uh, or yeah. your husband. To your and and I've learned uh, even with my wife. There's just Lisa has a hard time uh, imagining things uh, if she wasn't there to see it. Uh, then it just it's hard for her necessarily to get her handle around some things. And so uh, I, I, I just have to, I, I think sometimes that's, it can be a good thing, it's just sort of a, a humbling thing to realize, well, uh, yeah, I, I had some success at work, but my, my, my first calling is not my, my career, it's to be a father, to be a husband. And, uh, and I need just to right now lean into that. Yeah, and whether my kids, my spouse, praise me for the achievement, the breakthrough at work I had today or not, doesn't really matter. They just want to know: Am I? Do I love them? Am I a good husband? Am I a good father? Uh, and so, whether you've had failure or success, um, are you still the same person then? And sometimes we can just be in the doldrums. We got passed over at work, and now, of course, that has that's not our kids' fault. You know, it's not. Um, our kids shouldn't have to like have to endure a miserable father tonight because he didn't get the job promotion he was hoping for. Um, that, that, can, that is disappointing, but um, but they shouldn't necessarily pay the price for that. And yeah. so again, are you a different person when things don't go your way? Uh, and then just one or two last ones is a seventh one is just integrity means you're predictable. It's like your kids can take it to the bank. And in fact, you know, I'd, I, over the years, I would have people say to me, they would sort of suggest what they thought my dad would like. I'm sure your dad would really want to do this. And or I'm sure your dad would, would agree with this. And But I knew my dad well enough to to know immediately, no, he would not agree with that. I'm quite sure of that. <laughs> I, he would yeah. not like that at all. Uh, oh, well, you should ask him. Uh, you know, he might want to do this. And... Uh, I would say, you know what? I don't even need to ask yeah. him. I've, I, we have, I've known him. I know him quite well, and I know that he does not like that. He does not agree with that. And and I think that's actually a good thing to be predictable. Where yeah. your your kids, they know full well how you're going to act because they just they know you and you're consistent. You're you have integrity. Uh, you are always the same. Yeah, circumstances don't change who you are. And so year in and year out, uh, they know. So my kids know that I may have a bad pun, uh, <laughs> and I just. But was, at least you always have. A I bad always pun. have a bad pun. They can count on it. They can take that to the bank. Uh, they they know that I'm going to cheer for the same losing hockey team, and it doesn't matter that they lost another season. They uh, there are just some things, and it, it's very comforting to them though yeah. uh, to know that. What's well, stabilizing? Yeah, it's like yeah. th there's so many things that are different and changing, especially for kids as they're yeah. growing up and life is uh, is changing for them. But and, and that, of course, that's one of the things that can be so comforting about going home. Like once your kids are in college or they get married and they have their own families, is when you come home, some things just don't change. Uh, yeah, mom fusses over me like she always does. You you can count on that. Dad's going to be the same dad he's always been and and, and and that that gives uh, stability uh, to people when you, there's some some people that remain, especially if what they're what they're remaining is a good thing. And they're, right. They're always a good. They're always a thoughtful person. They're always a support. They're always a bedrock, uh, unchanging, and you, and that that gives people a sense a, an anchor in their life, uh, something that to ground themselves on. Uh, and then just maybe a last one is just uh, integrity means you also aren't aren't swayed by pressure from others or temptation. Uh, there's just a lot of people in our world that are going to do everything they can to to get, to sway us uh, yeah. to give in to a temptation. Uh, maybe it's just an enticement at work. Uh, chase after this uh, shiny object, and you could get rich quick. Uh, uh, you know, just compromise here and you, you'll get promoted and earn a lot more money. Just say what the boss wants to hear and uh, and then he'll show favor to you. Um, but uh, integrity says, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that tells the truth. I, I'm not a person that gets swayed because I, 
I want to please someone. I want to make someone happy. It's uh, I want to do a good job. I want to uh, have honesty. And so uh, regardless of what enticement, what pressure, whatever comes my way, I'm going to, I'm just going to determine that I will, I will follow my principles. I'll follow my values. Uh, and I, I can't be pressured, enticed, uh, to, to abandon those. Uh, and, and what happens is over time when you, you are that kind of person, your kids, your grandkids, they grow up and they see what it looks like to be a man of integrity mm-hmm. and a man who is predictable, a man of faithfulness, a man that is not swayed. And certainly I think in our culture today, uh, that, that, what a blessing that is. And of course, a lot of our listeners, you, you, your father might not have been that kind of man. Uh, but you know, and I'm sorry if that's the case, but, uh, but, but you can be that kind of man and, and your kids can, uh, grow up with that. Sam, you and I both had dads that we, you know, we could, we could take the, we know how they're going to respond. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We know what they'll be like and we could just pretty well script out, say, well, here's exactly what dad will probably do when he hears about this or when he finds out that what, what's going on, here's probably what he'll try to do to help. And, um, and what, what a stability that puts in our lives to know we have people like that in our life. And, uh, you know, certainly as I've lost my dad now earlier this year, um, you, you, that anchor, that foundation, uh, you know, we all lose that at some point as our parents age and, and then, uh, pass away. But, but, uh, certainly in your younger days, as you're forming your own identity and and the way you're going to handle yourself, it, this, it makes a huge difference if you've seen a role model for that. And so yeah. I realize we're just a, a, a day or two past uh, Father's Day, but uh, I think it doesn't hurt for just, us just to, to reflect once more before we move on to the next thing. And if you're a man, if you're a father, if you intend to be a father or hope to be one day, um, don't wait until you've got three kids before you start becoming a person of integrity. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You want to have all that in place before your first child is ever born, and uh, if you're before before you get married, just settle. I'm going to be a man of integrity, and when I make a vow to my wife, when I make pledges to her, uh, you can take it to the bank. No matter what comes my way, she's going to know what to expect, and uh, how blessed will be the people around you if you'll make that commitment for mm. your own life. Yeah. Well, thanks for the reminder, Richard, as always, and until next time. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If this is something you enjoyed, it really makes a difference if you leave a review and a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. We always love hearing from our listeners, so email us at podcast at blackme.org.